So this is a German equatorial mount. Uh, equatorial mounts in general are those that have one axis pointing at the North Star and the other axis controlling for elevation up or down from uh, the celestial equator, which is the plane of the solar system. Uh, that elevation is referred to on these kinds of mounts as declination. Positive declination going up is when the nose of the telescope, which would be out there, rises above the celestial equator. Actually, zero declination is right about here, and positive declination is above that, and then negative declination is below that equator. When the tube is horizontal like this, since we're at 40 degrees latitude, the declination with respect to the celestial equator is about negative 40 degrees. And this is about as low as you would ever want to point a telescope. Um, the high end is up toward the North Star. And in fact, when one is chasing stars around the sky, it's not infrequent with German equatorial mounts to have to take the telescope and point it up at the North Star, flip it over the mount, and then bring it back down to avoid crashing into the mount with the back half of the tube. Well, you've seen the declination motion, and I want to show you the right ascension motion. Right ascension refers to the motion of the stars east to west in the sky, it's also sometimes referred to as hour angle. It's what enables an equatorial mount like this, where one axis points at the north star, to counteract the revolution of the Earth on its axis and to point at one point in space, usually with a star at the center of it. And if this axis rotates 15 degrees per hour, that's exactly what it'll do. So let me pull this out of mesh. And now we can rotate in the positive hour angle and right ascension direction much faster than a telescope would normally rotate. And, and here we will be looking west, as the astronomers say, with the tube east of the pier, which is the norm, one normal mode of operation. And then going the other way, with the declination axle high on the west side, then this would be looking east. And as you can see, it has some potential difficulties because if we go too far east, we're going to crash the axle into this drive. So that's about as far as in the future we'll be able to go looking east with the tube on the east side. If we had flipped this over so that we'd gone right through the pole with the tube going around like this and over to the other side, we would be doing what's known as a meridian flip. And now, with the tube flipped over, looking out that way, now we can go as far east as we want. Here comes a demonstration of, with a tube set for about zero declination, moving to the east, and showing how, as we would come looking east with the tube on the east side, we'd run into trouble of a, with a potential collision. And that's why big telescopes like this need what is called hard limits that will cause the drives to stop before a collision occurs. And then after the observing session's over, uh, you, go, you bring the tube to a home position and the scope to a home position, which is usually, on most big scopes, with the declination axis horizontal, which means you're at local meridian, zero hour angle, and with the declination axis set horizontal. Here we go. So now it'd be about a deck minus 40, and that's the so-called home position where every observation session starts and ends. When this is, is finished, this little red lever pulling back is going to move this out of mesh, like so, but more slowly. And then 
one is free to balance the scope in this direction. Beautiful bronze gear from 1916. And a nice stainless steel worm from 2015. 